Good morning. I'm Lynn. And I'm Arnie. Look at the camera, Arnie. They want to know that you're talking to them. I Try recognize them, yes. Say, I'm Arnie. I'm Arnie. And, and I recognize you. And welcome to another day at Utopia Farms. So perhaps today we'll talk about various um, feeding systems that you can use with your sheep. Um, show you the ones we use and why we like them, why we don't, and uh, what your other options could be. It's going to be another busy day today, so let's get started. Yes, let's get started. <laughs> I'm thinking Arnie didn't think this one out too well. He's got a bell ready to bring into the uh, Suffolk barn there, and he let all the lambs out first. So I'm not sure how he's going to get in the barn with all those guys there. They're real happy about it though. Right away uh, when he opened the gate, uh, this whole crew came running out. Doesn't take them long to figure out what they like to do and do it right away. We'll go have a look and see how Arnie's duct tape job did on the feeder here, if they've knocked it out or if it's still holding tight. We do have a you back here eating. Ha ha! She's got her head in the correct hole, but as you can see, the duct tape's falling apart and the rod's just hanging there. And my guess is the sheep chewed on the duct tape. Because if there's something new there, they gotta check it out, which usually involves nibbling. Here goes the red green theory. So I just tied a knot in that piece that was dangling, got it back up. Hopefully that'll do until uh, the spring when we take the feeders out and totally repair it properly. Rain last night, so it's kind of a uh, Mucky in the yard today, but the lambs don't seem to mind it. So we just gave uh, the replacement lambs some nice third cut alfalfa mixed grass hay and there's a little bit left in the roll so Arnie's gonna go grab that now and bring it over to the creek pen and he's gonna put that in the little uh, lamb feeders. So I'm just waiting at the gate so that the lambs don't go in there because our replacement ewes are all free and we don't want them to all to get mixed up. You guys aren't supposed to be this way pretty uh, cloudy when we started chores but it seems to be clearing up now but uh, the cold temperatures are here but we don't mind if it's nice and sunny like this okay here he comes with the bale so this is just the core that was left over when he unrolled it and normally he would just roll it back uh, tomorrow or this evening for them but uh, the lambs in the creep area are out of hay and this is a perfect bale for them. Many the lambs have discovered it because this one it's been because it's third cut it's got uh, more soft alfalfa in it so first cut grows at the beginning of the season and because there's grasses in it the grasses grow longer faster um, so the first cut will kind of drown out the alfalfa and it will be mainly grasses. As you get down to the second cut, um, grasses don't grow back as well as alfalfa does. Alfalfa, when you cut it, it grows back again within a month. So the second cut will have a way higher proportion of alfalfa to grasses. And then when you get to the third cut, you'll even have more alfalfa as opposed to grasses. So this is why you leave the richer, softer alfalfa for your lactating ewes and for your growing lambs. So now he has 
to be really careful because the lambs don't quite know. here with his ladder which right now looks way scarier than I would like it with that big heavy bale being over their heads but he knows what he's doing this is not a red doing are you okay hurry up get it in there because that's dangerous you're actually your red green duct tape fell off <laughs> I tied it up again. They don't make the same type of tape as when the red green was out. Yeah, well, they've been pulling at it, I think. So this is instead of driving the skid steer in here through the sheep, he just rolls it in. You know, farmers don't make an awful lot of money when uh, your ladder is a wooden one. I imagine now all the lambs will come in to eat their food. I was going to talk to you about our feeders. These are the feeders we use. They're central alley feeders for feeding round bales of hay. Um, we prefer this method because it's quick and easy for us. It just requires um, putting a round bale into the feeder and rolling it out each day. Our feeders are about 120 feet long. And that will take a whole bale, and a uh, hundred sheep can eat that in a day. Our feeder has slanted bars on it. Right now, they're spaced at about seven inch, seven and a half inches apart, and it's about uh, just over two feet off the ground tall. We use slanted bars as opposed to vertical bars because um, that little slant when a lamb's trying to jump in it actually deters them a bit because it gets in their way so um, it keeps the lambs out of the feed are pretty good you've seen that we've had one or two lambs get in but the majority of them don't um, as we were discussing before um, it works really well for lambs and ewes. It's easy to access the feed. We've got a little metal lip on it, so when he's feeding the grain, it stays in the feeder instead of falling out, so they, it holds them in like a trough. And you can feed the hay in it as well. With these bars, the reason we have the bars is when they put their head in, they don't jostle as much with each other because there's a bar between their heads. And if there were, if it was just horizontal, bossier ewes would, would actually lean and push against the other ewes and try to squeeze them out of the feeder. Whereas here they can't do that, so they basically stick their head in and stay where they are. Um, little lambs sometimes will reach in like that <laughs> to eat, but usually they eat at when they are um, the same height as the feeder, they'll eat um, straight into the feeder. There's not a lot of wastage. The, the little slant also holds the, bar, the hay in a little easier than if it was vertical or horizontal. Um, after we built the feeders, we added um, these wooden bars up top because what we found is um, some of the bigger sheep would actually jump into the feeders when the bedding pack got too high. So that stopped them. So I guess in the future, if we were gonna build it, we might have made made this part a little taller. Um, underneath, there is a dividing wall. Katie, move out of the way. You can see we got a wooden board back there and it divides the two pens in half. It's where all the lambs go to sleep and stuff. And when the moms are eating at the feeder like that, 
they actually go hide under there too. Like when the moms are tearing into the feeder to get their grain and stuff, if there's a lamb in the way in the past, what they'd do is just run over the lamb and you'd end up with a lot of um, injured lambs, lambs with broken legs and stuff like that. Um, now, uh, it's very, 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 very rare that that happens because as the moms come, if there's a lamb in the way, quickly deeps under the feeder and it's safe. So they can eat easily off here. It handles around bale very easily. It doesn't waste hay and that's why we like them. And it takes up minimal space in a barn. It's only as wide as the bale. It's six inches wider so it can roll out easily without hitting the edges as you roll it out but it leaves way more space for lamb sheep comfort in the barn. Because instead of the uh, majority of your barn being taken up by a feeder, um, it's being taken up with uh, comfort space. So uh, the sheep have more room to exercise, run around, be comfortable. And they eat when they need it. These bales, these feeders could be made any width. If um, four and a half feet, ours is five foot wide because our bales are four and a half feet. But if you had bigger bales, you could make your feeders wider. We don't like, didn't like going over uh, four and a half feet with the bales because they're at that point they're getting really heavy to push out. So that works for us. And likewise, you could make it. Uh, them a lot smaller so that there is an even easier to roll out. As you can see, Ernie's got all the third cut hay here for the lambs, all piled up in these feeders. And they prefer the third cut hay to this hay over here, which I believe is first cut wrapped hay. And, um, because it's third cut hay, it's a little finer and not as long, so it's a little easier to pull out of these narrow space bars. See, these bar the spacing on these bars looks like it's about three inches. These were purchased, whereas these feeders here were made by Arnie, and they're interlocking. So um, in some barns, they're eight feet, some barns, they're ten feet. And you can see we have a divider there. And you can see that there's eyes on these bars so that we can put gates up um, at any time we want when we need them. Or they can be removed when we don't need them. So they all interlock. So if we want to reconfigure how they're set up, we can take them apart, we can move them, and stuff like that. These we had first. We thought they would be really neat because you could walk through them um, while you feed the sheep. But uh, the little bars are way too small for adult sheep. Like They can only get their nose in here. They can't stick their head in. So if it's right close, they can grab the hay. But it, um, if they can't get their nose in and their head in, they just gotta rely on being able to pull it out. And if it's really long hay, it actually gets hard to pull out. Some people think that's really good because it will slow the sheep down on eating the hay. Um, but you don't want to slow the sheep down on eating hay. You want them to eat as much as they can because that's how they grow. Um, we use these feeders now as creep feeders because we have them. And we can feed the creep in the bottoms. And the sheep don't, the lambs don't stand in the um, little feeder too much because it's got, um, it's on a V shape, so it kind of bangs on their head if they try to stand in there. So that part's good. But um, right now, this is finer hay, so and it's jam full, so they can reach it through the little bars. But as the hay goes down, you'll see that the lambs will all start eating over the tops. That's because um, sheep wanna not have to fight with their food to eat it. So when you see a sheep eating over top, it's because um, it can't get to the feed easily the, the other way. <coughs> These 
these guys all look happy in here right now. It's nice and new. Fresh hay dangling over. We hang it over like that so that they can see it and and taste it and encourage them to eat because these guys are learning to eat now. These these guys are like a month old. Some are a little more than a month old now. The problem we've been having with our feeders is that um, during breeding season when the rams come in, they can some of the rams can get their heads between those bars easily and others with real much bigger heads, the more Britishy type, um, can get stuck or it or it just feels tight on them and uh, they don't like that so they they won't put their heads through or we've had occasions where they've gotten stuck so you can see where Arnie cut a bar out and in one of the barns we did cut every other bar out because we had a ram with a larger head in there and he was getting stuck all the time the problem with that is now the hay does fall out and now you'll have two sheep trying to put their head in the same spot so they can get stuck. So uh, the long-term goal, again, this summer, once uh, we've got everybody out at pasture again, the plan is to take all these feeders out and widen the spaces because we have big sheep here. So if you had a smaller breed of sheep, this seven and a half inches would be perfect for you. Um, and it is only our rams that we have problems with and we only have rams in these barns when we're breeding so it's only like eight or ten rams at a time but those eight and ten rams are valuable to us and we don't want them getting stuck or injured so we're going to change the whole layout and probably expand the spacing by an inch that's it but it means taking them all off and doing it over again that's where being handy and being able to do the, these things yourself helps. And um, yeah, you learn as you go on year to year what works for you. And it works, this system works perfectly for us except for that ram thing. These are the hay feeders we started off with when we first got sheep. Um, these are basket feeders. I think these are the most common feeders you see around that people use for feeding sheep. We didn't like them, and that's why they're piled out here. And we probably should sell them because we've got three here that probably could be used and we're never gonna use them again. We got this type because it had a little tray underneath, so when you drop the round bale in it, the alfalfa leaves and stuff would drop into the tray and wouldn't get wasted, plus you could feed some grain in there if you wanted to, but it's really difficult to reach under and put grain in there. So we, to, for these feeders are designed so that you lay the bill in here on its round and then the sheep eat off it. We're gonna take you to Arnie's design which replaced this one to show you the difference. But um, these ones were also very dangerous because when they're laying on their round, um, the sheep would stick their head in there and chew away at it and when it started to get chewed down the bale would actually collapse and fall down more and it would suffocate the sheep it would crush them underneath the bale and it was a common thing that happened so we thought they have to struggle too hard to pull the hay out of this feeder and they were quite a deadly feeder as well and as a grain feeder they weren't very helpful either you just couldn't reach them and once the hay started falling in there you couldn't get anything in them anyway so Arnie made a new design which uh, we feel works better for feeding round bales individual round so bales. as most of our regular viewers know this is the feeding system of choice at our farm we have um, in the coveralls and in the main barn, we have a central alleyway set up in which Arnie will place a round bale. Doesn't matter if it's dry or wrapped, it goes in the feeder and he rolls them out. The, barn, the feeder we have in the coverall, we also have in uh, the back of our main barn here. We, we put one in here and 
this one, this one, uh, he cut the bars out and the spacing is really wide. So it saved us from the ram getting strangled in there, but uh, they're too wide now because uh, they're wasting a lot more hay. So we we are going to reconfigure the spacing, but it did us in a pinch and still it's the style we like. It's just getting that spacing right for your breed of sheep. We have big sheep, big rams, so we need a bigger spacing. Oh, you guys, why are you looking all like that? Why are they all gathered up here? You guys are hungry. Maybe we can show feeding you. These guys also have a similar feeder, but this used to be for heifers. So it was a cement block. So whereas these ones already made are all individual interlocking metal feeders. This one, we had the raised block here. So uh, all he did here is he made the um, head, head spacing up here. And he does have those extra metal bars so he could put the wooden strapping over top to stop sheep jumping over if he wanted to but uh, it's a similar design in here except in this barn and this is where you notice the benefit of the metal ones as opposed to the concrete this one doesn't have an escape route where they can go underneath the feeder so lambs can still get trampled in this barn if you had ewes and lambs in here Whereas in these barns, you have a place where the lambs can escape and um, they can also lie under there, which actually gives your barn way more usable space as well because when it, all the lambs are laying under there, it leaves a lot of room in your pen for the ewes and stuff like that. When I was, I was building those eight feet long yeah. for about the same price as the blue ones that we don't like. So that's about the same price as the blue one when I when I actually made that. And how much was that? About they were, at that time they were about eight hundred dollars. Eight hundred dollars a feet. But I don't know what the what the other ones are worth now. They they're probably gonna be worth more than that. I'm now. guessing now they're worth more. So we're we're using round bales because we have a lot of sheep. But um, we have the jugs set up here and we have jugs on either side. On the wall, we have to just feed them in the jug and put hay out. But this feeder here is designed exactly like our big round bale feeders with a dividing wall in the center so that the lambs can't get into the opposing pan. And as a result, the lambs in the jugs lay under there and we never have lambs uh, crushed in the jugs either. And because this is a smaller, narrower barn, we didn't want to run a big round bale in here because this is the bonding pen on this side. And if we had a wide feeder because of these posts that are in the barn, the support posts, uh, we would have basically not too much space for lamb and ewe comfort and able for them to run around safely. So Arnie decided to make a little feeder, which would be great for a hobby farmer too, or people with only a small amount of sheep and feeding square bales. So we feed small square bales in these feeders. So show them how it works. So I'll just tell you what I did here. So I, 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 picked, I basically made the same design, but just used lighter material. It's a, it's a metal bottom and, uh, and they're eight feet long. And we just bolted them together, so they're all they're all bolted. So the sheep can't move them. And I made these, I think, for about three hundred dollars. Now I, I did it myself, but for about three hundred a piece. Material. I so so I, the I, material I, is I think that. They're, de they're dearer now, probably, if you measure everything. But uh, but these are these are really made for square bales, little, little small idiot bales. Because when you're with the job, see, you can't have that kind of volume of hay. So you have to use square bales. So that's what they're really made for. And I, and I actually just walk along the side here to put the grain in, but I actually made it that I could, uh, oh, that's embarrassing. <laughs> I, don't use well, we I have... actually made it that you, can, that you can step up in them. Yeah, so if you wanted to. And, pour, and walk down there you and can, pour the grain. Just like he does in the big round feeders, you could walk down 
Um, and the sheep can eat from either side. They use with their lambs in the group pen can eat from the, the feeders and the ewes and the jugs can eat from them too. And the reason why I don't walk in is, it's made that way, but the reason why I don't walk in, every time you have a ewe in here, she only eats that much grain in a meal. So it's not worth my walk. So I just take a scoop and just give each one while they're in the jugs. So. But if I was a bigger farmer, I would have jugs on this side too. And then I would, yeah, I would take advantage of, the, of this. Yeah, they're extremely um, handy for the jugs. So. Um, they worked out really, really well. But um, you have to make use of whatever kind of space you have. So these feeders are actually really nice, but they, they're, they're designed for square bales. So what size are they? They're, um, they're, 30, inches high, they're 30 inches high and 30 inches wide. And so, when you say 30 inches high, where's the 30 inches? Up to here. Okay, so how, how high this is it This is the same the as the other barns, uh, 20, 22 inches. 22, yeah, yeah. I said about well, two We feet. have large sheep. If yeah. you have smaller sheep, you might want to have it a little lower. But the, the pan comes up quite quickly. And it's, it's going to... <clears throat> so I'm just saying, if you, if you start off from scratch, you see how you have jugs all up along the walls? If I had a nice barn, I'd have two sets of these with jugs on both sides. And I would have nothing. I hate the I hate the pens along the walls. Yeah. I don't like them at all. Yeah. And I think this pens on both sides is an extremely good way to feed. And then you don't throw hay in, in the in the jugs on the ground. They're eating in the manger. And why do you prefer the, our our feeders at our farm are all raised so that the when the sheep put their head in, um, as you can see from these guys, it's kind of at head level, so they can eat straight in. So the reason why I the reason why I did that in my lifetime we've always had feed bunks that that were that the animals had to eat down in down in the on the ground and and that that works well when you don't have a manure pack but when manure pack is higher the sheep actually it's almost has to stand on their knees to get to the bottom of that bunk so I want my animals to eat straight in. <laughs> So, so it's so it's making like a pit. So they really have a if it, if it's all level, it's fine. It's like grazing. But when the bedding pack gets too high, they they have to really reach in. And then you'd say, well, just clean out the bedding pack. But in the winter time, um, you want to keep that bedding pack in there as long as possible because it's creating heat for your sheep. So you don't want to be cleaning out your bedding pack every few weeks. Um, just a few times a year is probably good. And um, even with, so when the bedding pack gets higher in these pens, the sheep will start eating down into the feeder, but they'll still be up off the ground and stuff. It's just because the sun's going off. It's just sensitive. Okay, yeah, so uh, someone mentioned having, being nervous about having Chinese lights in the barn, and I don't know if you saw as I was talking, the lights were going on and off. But they're um, they're controlled by a sensor, which is light sensitive, and it's kind of a really really cloudy day. So when the thick cloud goes by, they turn on, and when the sun comes out again, they turn off. So it's nothing to do with unsafe lights. Oh, look at handsome sitting like that too. We thought only that white <laughs> torso was sitting like that. Handsome. What is that kind of? position you are sitting in. Hi Glad, we're coming out there now. This Spacing in here, also we're going to widen it because it's seven and a half inches, but you see how at the corner where you get the post, he's added an extra bar. That's so that, you know, a sheep will try put their head in a little space like that and get stuck. They can get their head in real easy, it seems, but they just can't get it out. So uh, we quickly learned that you have to block that so that they can't go yeah, in. So these are the basket feeders Arnie made out in the ram pen instead of using the ones we showed you outside. So these are like a stop sign. They're, uh, they're actually eight-sided. Because I want, I, I couldn't bend the pipe around, so I had to do it that way. Uh, so it's made, it's made to put in a, a four and a half foot round bale to drop it right on a slat. You can see what's left of it. Uh, these spaces are about uh, eight inches apart. 
Uh, what I would have done different if I did it again, I would have put that this bar on the outside of that uh, tubing, which gave me an extra inch, because the rams are the rams are still kind of uh, tough at that. It's uh, it's just a wooden bottom, pieces of two by ten, and the legs are uh, the legs are about twenty inches long. Uh, tw is it twenty inches high? And, uh, and so it keeps it off the ground, and I like them a lot. There's a little bit more, there's a little bit more waste on this, but uh, they need bedding anyhow. And it's pretty cold conditions out here all winter. And so why would you want to feed them on the flats instead of the rounds? On the flats, uh, they just uh, they just consume a lot more hay. It comes apart real easy. See how I see how that pulls out easily. And on the round, they couldn't get it out. They're fighting too much. If you if you try to pull that pe that kind of just peels off. You can just see? knock it like that. See how it peels right off? Easy to eat. If it's on the round, so by the round, like this is a circle, that bale of hay. So on the round, it would be on the round part, whereas this is on the flat part of the circle. On the round, the weight, they weigh what, 800 pounds? 700, 700, 800, 700. Are gonna be laying on top of that hay on the bottom. So. In order for them to get it, they got to tug it out or break it off with their teeth. Uh, I would challenge people to be able to pull it out. It's very, very difficult. So it makes eating a lot more difficult. But you know what I really like about it? When you sell sheep, it makes them look longer. <laughs> well, a lot of them, what, what the, our guys do, and we talked about e eating from the top, and it usually is where they prefer to eat and our guys what they do is they put their feet on the board and they we just loosen that off because even here with the bars the bars they do have to pull around the bars and they would rather it just have no restriction whatsoever so they tend to do that but it's much easier to feed them this way see he's not far, he's not struggling to get that hay out He's got a mouthful. He didn't have to pull or rip around or anything. And he doesn't ever get his head stuck. And if it's on the flat like that, it won't drop down and crush their heads as they're eating um, because it's already flat on the ground. The round ones, because they're curved, they eat at it and it will make like a little center core and eventually it collapses. And uh, most round bale people who use those feeders will tell you that they've had the bales drop down and suffocate their sheep or goats or whatever it is. Um, so nobody wants that. And uh, also when you're putting the bale into the feeder with your tractor or your skid steer or whatever, um, you got to watch when you drop it in because uh, if the sheep are anticipating that hay coming and they'll put their heads in the feeder before the hay gets put down and you can uh, get them trapped that way too. When the lady was born, honey, how long did it take him to come out? <laughs> He's that long. It must have took about a minute. Well, he had, he had a brother and a sister too. I'm, I don't know who his sister is, but we've got his sister too and his mom. And this is what we have for a grain feeder for the rams. What's this, Arnie? It's an old hay elevator. It's an old hay elevator. It's a great manger. It's perfect manger for them. You go to old farm sales and they have them up for sale. They're all beat up. And took the wheels off it. And... They work perfect. Hi, Felon. And. Uh, and as you saw, Gladiator's not limping anymore. That's Gimli. Gimli. People like Gimli's little wrinkly face. Do you find that attractive? Yes, he is extremely attractive. It looks a little bit like an Elder Franz. He does look like an Elder Franz, but he, he's not. He's registered. He's not fudged at all. These are the feeder options we use at our farm. Um, 
all these are metal feeders because Arnie can weld and stuff so um, it makes them last longer and they're stronger and they're easier to clean and don't hold um, diseases and lice and stuff like that the way that wooden ones will but all of them could be designed with using wood and be just as effective for feeding sheep of course if you're feeding TMR you're going to be uh, you're going to have an alleyway where you drive a tractor through uh, in order to spread it what's that ram doing with that cat the cat loves the rams and vice versa well boy is that getting cold And it is getting cold. So we're gonna head in and get some lunch well, now. I think we've shown you what we do with feeders and hope that that gives you a few ideas and explains why we do it that way. And uh, I guess we're gonna call that a day. Arnie's gonna be an idiot again. I love like Gimbal, Gimby. Gimbly. <laughs> not Gimbal. Anyway, uh, hope you join us again tomorrow for the next episode at Utopia Farms. Thank you for watching. Bye for now. Bye for now.